Well, happy Friday and welcome back to another episode of Project Time Tech. Today's project is going to involve doing some upgrades on my home network with a big focus on this home network cabinet here. Now, unfortunately, this video was plagued with GoPro file issues. I lost two or three sets of files that were irrecoverable. Some I managed to recover, but there's going to be some terrible audio in some of it, and there's going to be some really nasty video in some of it, so I apologize for that up front. This would be a good time to go through the first part of what is in the current rack and why it's there. Starting at the bottom, we have an old Cisco UC phone system that's doing nothing other than holding up the UPS that sits above it. Next, we have a Lenovo Think server. This basically takes care of running my camera software, which is Blue Iris. Also, it runs OwnCloud. The reason for OwnCloud is because my wife and I both have Android phones, and we take a lot of videos when we're out and about. OwnCloud allows me to automatically upload any video that I take with my phone up to a share on my server. That share on my server is basically just a map network drive up to the NAS unit. At this point in time, I have every picture or video that I've recorded with every cell phone I've owned for about the past eight or nine years, and so does my wife. We don't overwrite, and we don't do deletions, so everything's there, even the garbage. Next, above the server, we have a Synology NAS. This is an RS-816 with a one gigabit port in the back, actually two one gigabit ports in the back. And this is part of what we're going to be changing. It has four six terabyte Western Digital NAS drives on board, and it's very nearly full at 88%. The reason it's so full is because there are tons and tons of HD and 4K video files on the NAS. See, I shoot a lot of video for YouTube. Not this channel. This is a secondary channel for me. My primary channel, Project Time Garage, has over 110 videos up and I save all of my raw footage because sometimes I find that I need to refer back to footage from previous videos. Above the NAS, we have a CloudKey G2 Plus that is running Unify Protect. I know I said I was running Blue Iris for my camera solution and not Unify Protect, and there's a reason for that. At this point, we can pick back up and join our host, me, and pick up where we lost our video, which is explaining the cloud key G2 plus. This basically takes care of the unified doorbells. So I have two of them. I have one set or one doorbell at my entry gates and I have another one at my front door. So when someone pulls up to deliver a package and rings the bell, I get a notification on my phone. I can talk to him and I can use a piece of software on my phone to trigger the gate to open or tell him just to leave the package. Works extremely well. Now, in the future, I probably am going to do a video of moving all of my uh, existing cameras over to Unify Protect because I really just really like the interface. But at this point, I've got a pretty significant investment in access cameras. And if you know, if you've bought access cameras before, you know that they're anything but cheap. Some of the ones I've got on the property here are excess of 700 bucks, especially for the, you know, the serious gun outdoor cameras. Those don't adopt into Unify Protect. So I have to use only Unify cameras. So my strategy is as I replace cameras, I'm replacing them with Unify cameras so that in the future I can make that change. But for now, we're sticking with Blue Iris. The next thing we have is basically just a power meter. This just lets me know what kind of voltage I'm using and gives me the ability to turn uh, to turn ports on and off from here. I don't really use this the way I thought I was going to use it. So it's going to go bye bye. I'm not going to use it anymore. Instead, we're going to replace it with the uh, with the Unify power distribution unit. And I'll show you that in a minute. The next thing we have here is just a trip light uh, PDU. Most all my plugs are on the back side, so all of the equipment in this rack is plugged into the back of this. Next, we have a USG Pro 4, and this has been in production now for uh, probably three or four years, something like that. Um, nothing special here. This is just the, the WAN input from my internet service provider, AT&T. Their input or their point of presence is right here. It's, uh, it's fiber into there, handed off to uh, gigabit copper. So it's effectively a gigabit internet connection. Basically, LAN 1 goes into my, my private network here, and LAN 2 
is basically a single cord going out as a DMZ because my wife works from home and she has a bunch of equipment that was uh, given to her by her employer and I wanted all that junk off my network. So basically uh, this DMZ is just directly to the outside. They have their own firewalls and stuff. Ain't my problem. This firewall will be going away and it'll be replaced by a unified Dream Machine SE. The main reason that I'm replacing this is speed. So this thing has two SFP ports on it, which support, support fiber GBICs or copper GBICs up to one gigabit, which is fine because I have one gigabit from my internet service provider. But the thing is my internet service provider now offers two gigabit. I can't take advantage of that with this current USG. So the Dream Machine SE can handle up to 2.5 gigabit on the WAN interface. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in, in preparation for that coming down the road. The next thing in the, in the rack here is gonna be our uh, USG or our um, Unify switch. So this is a Unify switch 48750W and basically 48 ports of PoE, including 24 volt passive, which is kind of handy for some of the older Unify equipment. And the big thing is though, it has two SFP plus ports. So I can, I have uh, the ability to run 10 gigabit connections in here. So I've gone ahead and populated this thing with two uh, gigabit SFPs or two 10 gigabit SFPs. Now the 10 gigabit fiber SFPs, that's really important because that's really kind of the driving factor behind this entire project that I'm doing here today. See, I have an outbuilding that kind of serves as a little bit of a studio, a little bit of an editing room as well. And currently that has, has been being served by this uh, unit, this nano beam. I think this is a five gigahertz nano beam, basically shooting directly over to it. Now it's not ideal because it literally shoots through the wall of the building uh, the building that I'm in all the way into the building that I'm recording in. It's not ideal. I was getting a good hundred megs across it pretty reliably. Problem is that's no good when you start to drag a file which is stored on this NAS or basically a folder full of video that is call it 50, 60 gigs and try to yank it across there. It's anything but good. Now I also, um, experimented a little bit with a building to building bridge from ubiquity and that was actually pretty good i was getting i was getting a pretty solid gigabit connection across there or very nearly a gigabit connection across there uh, with that unfortunately though gigabit you now that's still not enough transfer transfer speed when you're talking about um, 4k video it's just not so i really need a solution here that allows me to store on a device that has 10 gigabit and that allows me to get that 10 gigabit out of this building into the next building and all the way to the workstation full 10 gig now we've ran this fiber connection here this goes out of this garage all the way over to the other building attaches to a usw enterprise switch and uh, is 10 gigabit we did use multi-mode fiber because we had some, so that's why we did that. So I have multi-mode SFPs on both sides. So at this point, the fibers ran, it's time to light it up, time to rebuild this rack and make it look a little bit better. We're gonna pimp this rack while we're at it because, ooh. Let's take a look at what we're going to, uh, what we're gonna be putting in. I chose to go with this particular Synology NAS here this is an RS422 Plus. It's loaded with four 10 terabyte hard drives in it. They'd be Western Digital NAS drives. I've also added the uh, 10 gig copper module to it. So we have full 10 gigabit coming out of the Synology NAS. This is our uh, Dream Machine SE. We have 2.5 gigabit WAN interface. And I also have two, uh, two fiber uh, SFP ports here, or two SFP ports that are 10 gig supported. We have the uh, Unify PDU Pro. And I also chose to get a brush panel to go with this. Now this isn't the Ubiquity one. I probably should have ordered that from, from Ubiquity so it would be the same silver color, but yeah, I didn't. But anyway, this will take care of 
uh, the ugliness of power cords. This will make it look a whole lot better. We're also gonna be installing a second jack panel because my first one is basically full. And I've gone ahead and I've put a couple of uh, USB and USB-C jacks in it just to keep as many cables on the inside as I can. We'll also be installing this BD LED magic color desktop light. I pretty much bought them because they're magic. It, uh, in keeping with the theme of pimping the rack, I'm going to take one of those and put it in the top of the rack and I think one of them in the bottom of the rack and try to get them angled just so they shine down and cast a wonderful glow on the front of the rack. It should look good. Well, I guess that's probably enough yapping probably time to get involved in this project. So um, I'll montage some of this, taking this junk out of here, and then we can reconvene once that's done. So let's get started. Well, at this point, there's really no magic to the whole thing. It's basically see something in the rat, remove it from the rat. That's professional install, look at that. This is the kind of stuff I'm looking to clean up. So this is what we ended up with as far as the rack goes. Everything neat, clean, and in its place. I like that very much. Probably need to, to change and decide how I'm gonna have these, have these little things be. I don't know, figure out something on that. Um, on the light situation, um, these LED magic color lights that I bought, really cool. That's how I did them. Just kind of zip tied them up there and tried my best to angle them so that they would go up and not really so much back so that when you close the door it lights up the cabinet but not too much I'd say that's a major improvement over what we had before. Um, <laughs> I really like the little dance and light thing. And with this nifty little remote, we can change the motif or whatever. So um, I'm torn between white and dark blue. I, just, I really don't know which one I like. I'll probably just run it with white for a while or maybe some dancing lights or something like that. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, um, big change much better speed. I have 10 gig out to my editing and recording uh, building. Stand by for our next video, which is going to take care of getting, uh, getting network connectivity out to my shop building. That's another one. Don't know if I'm going to run fiber to it or if I'm going to shoot air fiber. I'm probably, I'm probably going to shoot air fiber at first just because I already have the radios. And I kind of want to see how the, uh, the HD60 air fiber performs uh, like this. So 
I'll probably do that next. Uh, so that'll be, uh, that'll be a fun one. And then the following uh, is gonna be, or the one following that, I guess, will be taking care of getting my camper um, set up. I've got a little bit of a network in my camper and a, a nano beam and all that. Um, I'll go through and get all that set up and get it pointed toward the house and I've got a NAS out there. I'll do some backups from here out to it. So that should be an interesting video too. I wanna make it a little easier when I go to campgrounds to be able to connect to their Wi-Fi service. So anyway, guys, hope you got something out of this. I know I did. It was a fun project and it did a lot. So until next time, thanks for watching.